Okay, so as people continue to join uh, at the top of the hour, I am just going to begin. So hello, everybody, and welcome to Mastering More for Apps, Procurement Essentials in the EBS Toolbox. I am Stephanie, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Since this is a quick fire webinar, I just want to go over a few things as fast as possible before handing it over to our host, Rajna. So everyone will receive today's recording by the end of the week. Plus, we'll also have some templates that we'll be sharing for you, so please keep an eye out for that as well. And after Rachna presents, we will begin our Q&A portion. During the session, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A box that can be found down below or in the chat. Uh, we will only answer them during the Q&A uh, to allow everyone to hear the whole presentation and then to hop off if they need, it, if they need to. And then... So this is our fourth session of the day for our End User Education Day, which means we actually only have two left. I hope you joined our previous ones. If not, not a big deal, because we'll still send you the recordings. If you can make the later ones, that's also great too, but I do know they might be later for some other people, but again, we will send you those recordings. So do not worry about that. Uh, but before passing it off to Rashna, we have our Director of Partnerships, Steve Dozier here, and he just has a few words to say. Steve, would you like to take it away? Thank you, uh, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Steve Dozier, Director of Partnerships. I help Oracle partners leverage our more for apps tools to better serve their clients. So welcome to Procurement Essentials in the EBS Toolbox. This year, we just entered our 25th year in business. Today's the first time of hosting a full day of end user training for all of our customers and interested um, clients out there as well. Our Oracle expertise helps us solve data problems in Oracle EBS and Fusion Cloud ERP. Our mission is to remove the friction and data complexities within your ERP system. As we head into a heavy retail buying season and inventory replenishing in the new year, Many organizations are focused on improving their procurement processes. In this session, you're going to learn more about unlocking the full potential of the More for Apps EBS Toolbox Procurement Suite, as well as enhancing your procurement process for greater efficiency. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Rachna Haste, who's going to be leading the session today. She has 18 years experience in Oracle ERP implementation and support services and has worked for large integrators such as Infosys. She has extensive experience in manufacturing and supply chain, and she's been with MoreFraps for over 10 years and enjoys helping different clients and businesses overcome their ERP challenges with MoreFraps. Rachna, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Steve and Stephanie. And um, I'm happy to host this webinar today with you all. Many of you I've already worked with, and some of you might be new, so really happy to connect here. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen and I'm going to straight away dive into the wizards. That's our toolbox, the ERP, the EBS toolbox. And we are going to start with the requisition wizard. So what I plan to do, as Steve outlined before, this is uh, mostly focused on Oracle EBS purchasing. And we are going to cover the entire flow from requisition onto a PO and going into receiving and a little bit about sourcing. So quite a bit to cover, a lot of ground to cover. But I'm uh, going into a level deeper, assuming you know many of you, this is more like a training session where some of you are already aware. But I'll run over the recaps every now and then on what we are doing so that um, somebody who's new is also familiar, is also aware what I'm at the level I'm at. Okay, so this is our requisition wizard, which is equipped to build requisitions, create from scratch, do I procurement requisitions, as well as update existing ones. So I'm already logged in. What I wanted to touch upon in, in today's session is lesser used, often missed kind of features, hidden features and accelerating tips for you all. So often we have to go into um, just replenishing existing requisitions. It's the end of a quarter, you want to replenish the order from before, whatever you had procured from your supplies, you just want to do a redo of that, a, a repeat um, order. So what's the best way to do that on the requisition wizard? The requisition wizard, as you know, mimics the form. You have all the columns as uh, as you would see on the Oracle requisitions form, including the header level, line level, and then going down if you have anything on sourcing or distributions. And this to those of you who are new to more perhaps is a completely tailored and personalized layout. You can remove columns 
and resequence or reorder columns as you need if you're getting your requisitions from any kind of a, a file or external partner, you can tailor and mirror this format to suit your um, external sheets and copy and paste from that. So that's the flexibility that these tools offer. And I'm already logged in through the ribbons here and we are ready to do some repeat um, of past requisitions. So what's the best way to do that? One is as a buyer, I would know most often what my past requisitions are. I wanna just repeat them. I can just pop them in here from my past uh, reports, and then I can just go in and download. So that is an easy way to get started. So you can just download them and you would get all the requisition raw data from the past uh, quarters. And all you need to do then, if you have to just repeat it, is to um, change up the dates, put your quantities for the new quarter. If there is a change in the pricing, you can do that. And you have um, a head start on creating your new requisitions. Besides this, I'm also going to talk about how you can download if you have requisition templates. Now, templating is an interesting and a lesser known feature even in Oracle. So the Oracle module offers templates in requisitions. And those are for any kind of uh, requisition templates are built in Oracle for repeat kind of, um, you know, if you want to keep on repeating the same kind of items and quantities and, um, you know, all the details, the dates and everything is going to repeat and, and you want to have a pre-built template, that's when Oracle provides the templating feature. So that template is available here as well. So as you can see, as a result of the download, we already have all the lines. Now, all I need to do is remove this requisition number from the past. All right, so I can just highlight all of these. You would notice that there are past header IDs, line IDs, a lot of a lot of um, you know vestigial information from the past requisitions. Now, there's one quick and easy way to blow away all of that in one button click, and that is the clear status and ID columns. Pretty handy feature when you're recycling old data into new ones. So just click on that. It'll blow away all the old requisition numbers, the IDs, and everything else. Uh, that is as a, as a leftover from the past information. Now we can go in, wipe off the dates, bring it to current. These happen to be from yesterday and recent past. That's why you see dates in October. But in a real world, you might have dates from a quarter before. And you want to wipe them off, bring, bring them to the current period. And here you can make use of the default values. The default values row running on the top as a gray bar gives the ability to put a universal value wherever it is blank. So if you put a date here, including a formula that takes over and cascades down to all the blank rows. If you have a certain date, which is going to be different, you can very well plug it in here. It's not going to overwrite this, but wherever it is blank, it's going to take over from the blank, uh, from the default values row. So that makes it easy. It saves you some data key entries and saves you some time. And uh, I use that extensively when it comes to destination, sub inventory, location, a lot of things. So that gives you uh, all of the data. You can um, just punch in the right quantities if you want to revise them and then reuse this for the new quarter. In my case, yeah, there's really no change in the quantity. So I'm going to just make use of the same, all right? Since it's a test instance, Let's look at the other way to reuse or recycle from a template or any other Oracle agreement, if you have a blanket agreement or any of the other sources. So that's the download form. And here you can download from a PO, existing PO if you want to utilize the data. You might not have a requisition in the past quarter. You might just have a PO and then you want to utilize that data to uh, generate a new one. You can do that with this. You can also do a template download Let's look at that. I was talking about the templates, how Oracle has given these requisition templates. Those are available here as well. Okay, so if you, you can just plug in the template name here and it gets you all the templates. Now ours is a kind of a skinny instance, not too much going on, but yeah, you would be able to access all of your templates. You would be able to download them. And that's a neat little feature which is available in Oracle as well as in the wizard where you can just download the template, plug in your um, the type you want to do an internal requisition or an or a purchasing external one. And once you have that, 
you can just you have all the items and everything from the template just the header is missing you can just say whether it's a purchase or an internal and you're ready to put a description if you need okay. replenish and then you are ready to upload all right so some of the basics of logging in, uploading, and how to create uh, some of those. I had also done it in a previous webinar, and we can also share some videos, product over overview videos to go through the basics. But I'm just going to do it here as a preview. I won't go through the concurrent processing and all of that. You will see that it goes through the interface tables. We always rely on Oracle's trusted um, carriers like the APIs, or interface tables whenever it comes to interfacing data into Oracle. So it goes through the um, validated pathways that Oracle has provided. It goes into interface tables, and then there is an import program that can run in the instance, or we can trigger it off from here. And all of these are available in videos. If you all, uh, any of you are new to it, just pop in a message. We can share videos at the end, going through the entire dynamics of how to do it. Okay, you'll see that there's a lot of variance, accrual information being defaulted, which is all good. It's just taking over the defaulting rules that Oracle has based on the uh, settings that you have on this procurement organization. You see error messages, which is perfect. You don't have to go through error logs or go into even the import programs. If they fail, you, you can get the error messages back here. You don't really have to hop across multiple levels or multiple screens or log into Oracle for that matter, okay? So we see that it's the status because it was the requisition I downloaded was already in process. So that's a valid uh, rebuttal from, from the wizard and from Oracle. You cannot straight away go into in process. You would start with incomplete or pending approval and that's why it rejected these. But the others that, that you see as pending have gone into the interface tables and they're awaiting the Oracle import program, which we can submit from here or they would be um, automatically scheduled in most of the production instances. So that has created our requisitions. I'll just go in and refresh to get the requisition number back. As you can see, there's no requis requisition number to begin with. And the moment the request is completed, we should be able to see it back here. Okay, we haven't submitted the program, but typically that's how you would see it. And this is how the results are typically. So you would see the requisition numbers back here. All right, there is also a recently introduced, probably in the past one year that we introduced update requisitions. And that is another feature that's not very widely known. And I wanted to show how, which, uh, which of these um, fields are available for updates. So you have all of these at the header level, line level, these could be updated. All you need to do is go into the requisition update uh, mode and it has, has its own corresponding sheet. So you can generate a new sheet for that. I have an existing one, so I won't navigate to it. And I can download existing requisitions and I can make updates in this. And these are the available columns. These are listed in the user guide. Just to let you all know how the user guide is accessible, you can just go into your wizard, any of the wizards, you go in and you pull up the help, it'll take you to user instructions. And this is pertaining to that specific wizard that you are in. So that's an easy way to get in there. So let's go ahead into, uh, let's go ahead and complete the cycle. We have a requisition at hand. Let's go into PO wizard and turn it into a purchase order. Now, many of you might be familiar with purchase order wizard. I've seen people go in and use the standard PO, the blanket agreements, but often missed is the auto create mode within PO wizard. And this one seems to have logged off because of the other one. So yeah, let me go ahead and log in. So this is the login process. Every wizard has its ribbon and you can go in and log in, pick your responsibility, go in. So there is an auto create mode here within PO wizard. You just have to pick it from this clipboard sheet uh, where you can pick the modes and you can generate a sheet related to the auto create. Once you're in there, you're able to pull in open requisitions and you can um, combine them in whichever way. You can combine across re requisitions if it's all going to one supplier. It makes it a lot easier compared to the auto create screen in Oracle. 
and you can uh, mix and match and sort and do all sorts of things. So let's look at that. Let's say I pull up the form here. It's easy to just go in and pull up the download form. It's just finishing up the sign on here. Okay, so let's go into the download form. And within the download form, you have the ability to search existing requisitions using multiple um, filters. So what I tend to do is usually the creation date, but very useful is the ability to search by buyer. In a real world, you would want to just look at your own. You can search by need by date, whatever is the most priority coming up first. You can look, look up by the creation date range. So I'll just go by this month. Shouldn't be a very busy system for me. So I can just go by that and then I can download. So the benefit here you'll see compared to the Oracle screens is that you can combine multiple requisitions much easier. You can see all the data at a glance like a report. You can sort it now. Even within, within the download, you can sort it by things like if you have provided, provided a supplier or a supplier site, you can sort by that and then combine across suppliers. That makes it much easier. All right. So for here, I've just sorted by requisition number, but these are all. You can even... If it's a manager who's looking at multiple buyers, you can do it by preparer or buyer or requester and combine based off of that or by supplier or, or even by item. This could be useful if you want to stack up all the items and send to a specific supplier or shift it uh, to a different, based on sourcing, you have one, but you want to shift it to someone else, you can do it by item and group them together into a different requisition. Okay, so we have our download. So here's where the power comes. As I was saying, you have multiple requisitions, multiple lines. I can now sort them and I can combine them into a single requisition all across, okay? Or break it up any which way. So here's a neat little way to do it. Um, even on any of our wizards, you want to um, you know, combine or split at different places. The header line or the header row is really the separator between different um, records, you know? So basically if you remove these, the repeating headers and bring one header at this point, it's basically going to combine all these lines into one, one PO, all right? So same can be done on these. So if I want to combine across 60 and 61 into one PO or the 72, basically I can just get rid of all of these information. I can combine them into one, all right? or these that are all at Advantage Corp. For example, this one is all Advantage Corp. So why split into two? I can just get rid of all of these at the header level and we get only one single PO against all of these lines. So that's an easy way to um, combine across different, which is kind of difficult in the um, Oracle screens. Okay, once you've done that, now all of these could be separate requisitions. We can keep them as one-liners just to have ease of control over them, okay? So and we can combine all of these and this one works off of a API. So you really didn't no, don't need to do any import programs and all of that with a click of upload, it automatically goes in and triggers off the private API for auto creation and brings back the PO number here. So there's no pending status you would see here, which is, which is there in the PO mode and many of the other blanket agreement mode you'll see a pending status, oh, it's bouncing me back for the supplier and site. So when you're doing a PO, obviously you have to put a supplier and site. So let me do that. So you'll see that it stops us for the essential things. Okay, so we are going to plug in, let's say Dell computers here. And we can pull up the forms, as many of you might not might know, or some might not, but you can pull up forms here at any point to bring up the list of values. So I can double click in any of the fields, and this loads up a complete list of values live from your Oracle instance, caches it here for the session, and you're able to look up sites or any of the columns. You can see that there are tabs running up across the top. And you can even plug, pull up the list of values for descriptive flex fields. And you can pick them. And once you click OK, it falls on the right place. All right. The, the same applies to 
distributions in any of the sections here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it for this one where we already have the supplier and everything provided. Some of these. Okay, so this one has it now. So we go ahead and do that. And this, as I said, is a direct API call. Yeah, I think we missed it at one place again. So we should, it should bounce that back, but it should go ahead with the others. So that's the auto create mode very simplistically. Okay. So that's an error. This one is pending. Okay. So we will be able to see the PO number at the end of the process. Okay. Next is on the uh, on the POs, we can also do a blanket agreement update. That's also something uh, people seem to do uh, at a regular basis. You want to put a new, uh, break it into a new um, shipment, or you want to break it into, uh, if you have buckets based on quantities, you might want to end it and put a new um, value for your um, slabs. So all that can be done also in the blanket agreements, okay? And then there is standard PO. You can also have project distribution information. So if you all want to put it to a task, there is a way to put your project information using the project number and the task number. Now, all of these, you might want to separate and uh, differentiate your users based on responsibilities. For that, there is a feature here to go into the PO wizard setup. If you don't want everyone to have access to the, to create POs with project information, you don't want to give that to everyone and you want to limit it, you can go into PO wizard setup and there are managed templates, which allow you to slice up and dice up which area should be seen for which users. So you can go into manage templates here and then you can create a new template, which is just for uh, the users that are, or the responsibilities that that makes a PO against a project information. Okay, so you can do that. I'll just use an existing one. So let's say I have a standard one. So the way it works, you have the standard purchase order mode, and then you can pick and choose which columns are required or which columns are even selected on the sheet. So you can very well hide it from certain responsibilities. So if I go down to the project level. So these are all the distribution attributes and then attachments, you can say no if you don't want them to be seen. So all of this is available in the edit by sheet. So if you go into edit by sheet here, you are able to control which, which of these can be selected, which of these you want in your uh, in your specific template and then you can assign them to responsibilities. Now this is also a feature which is available in many, most of our wizards, which are on the common new architecture. We have, we have brought most of our wizards into the new architecture where it allows you to manage and clamp down templates to responsibilities. All right, so you can just do a yes, no, what you wanna see and what you don't wanna see. And within here, you can block out certain things. So for example, here, I don't have the project information on this template, okay? So that, that way you can just assign this to specific responsibilities. Right. So if I just want to do a new one, I can create a new one, give it a template name just for project POs, and then clamp it down just as a standard PO. And then I get all the columns, but I can then remove some of them. All right, so here I can edit by sheet, and then I can say no to some of the columns here, which will hide them from my new sheet. And then I can just limit POs to a certain responsibility. All right, so let's go quickly to the PO wizard. I'll say no to saving anything here. Let's go to the PO receiving wizard, I meant. Uh, so here we are going to talk about, we know that PO receiving wizard can create receipts. Many of you use it for that. We have videos we can share for those of you who want to see the basic concept, concept of creating a receipt from scratch. You can just plug in your shipment number, your pack, packing slip number, BOL, all of that, and then reference the POs directly here to receive. 
But there are other methods. You can even, the PU receiving wizard, what we sometimes forget to uh, highlight or people miss out is that you can also create an ASN. For example, your supplier has sent you an ASN, uh, advanced shipment notice, and you want to create an ASN out of it. You can actually go in and download a PO and PO number by based on the PO numbers, and you can create ASNs out of it. So let's see how to do that very quickly here. Again, this is an interface based wizard. Oops, sorry for that patch. Yes. So you can put in your PO numbers and you put your download source option as open POs. You can download from multiple sources here. But what I'm going to do is open POs and put in the PO number under the right column here. And I can highlight all the PO numbers that the supplier is sending an ASN ad advanced shipment for. And then I can create an ASN against it. So once I put in the PO numbers, it can get all the line details and everything. You don't have to plug in anything. So it gets all the line details from the POs. And you can just note what quantity you want to create, generate the ASN for based off what the supplier has sent you, put the dates, what is the expected date. You can remove all these dates and I can just put today's date as the transaction date. So I'll just remove all of these, all right? So that it's going to default. If you recall, this is the default value, which, which is going to cascade down to all the rows. I can alter, this was the original order quantity. If I want to do all of it, or I just want to do a partial receiving or ASN against it. So I'm going to just, just going to do a hundred here. Okay, and then 10 here. So I can plug in the values based on what the supplier has sent. And then I can go in and create an ASN. So at the even the header has been included here. So just for the uh, ASN information at the header level, you just put an ASN type and then put your shipment number if you need that. I also used a formula here, which keeps it unique using the row number. So I'm just doing an ASN based off of today and row number, and I'm going to highlight these and upload to create an ASN against what the supplier sent me for these POs. I can put in the exact dates that the supplier has informed me with. All right, so this will make it easier at the time of receiving, you have your, um, you know, shipment number. Now, wherever the quantity was blank, it's just taking it as the entire order quantity. It just says it's deriving it, which means it's assuming all of the quantity is coming from the supplier. Whatever was the order quantity is going to be derived. If you want to limit the quantity, just overwrite with the exact quantity. All right, so that's the way you create an ASN. And then going into receiving, you just can download the ASN, just like you download POs. Here, uh, what we did was the open PO was the source. Instead, if you want to download an ASN while you're creating a receipt when the material actually arrives at the docks or at your um, the buyer station, you can go in. Just like you plug in your open POs, you can actually plug in receipt ASN numbers, shipment numbers also. Okay, and that is another way to download and create against that. Okay, so you can go into the header level and we have the shipment number here. I can plug in these shipment numbers and I change my source to ASN shipment, just like the open POs we had downloaded. The same can be done on receipt. You can download from open POs, but in this case, I'm downloading shipments and I can say download using sheet data. So yeah, so these ASNs might not be in the right status, but yeah, basically if you take an ASN, you download it, you'll be able to get the ASN information, same as what you got the PO information. So that's quickly doing it using ASNs and existing POs, the receiving becomes much easier. And then many times I've seen as part of procurement and the purchasing processes, it's it gets much faster if you do sourcing rules and sourcing, uh, assign sourcing to the items and it becomes, um, much easier. It's a very tedious task to turn on sourcing, but it's very handy when it comes to dropship orders. You want to create your POs automatically or even from blanket agreements or um, you know, you want to do from auto create from requisitions and you want to straight away assign the supplier based on sourcing rules or, or the assigned ASLs, approved supplier list for the items. 
that becomes much easier, but it's hard to turn it on because you have a lot of, I've heard from people that it, there's so many thousands and millions of items sometimes, you know, so many items and you want to assign the right supplier to each one. So it becomes easier when you have this kind of a format, you have a sheet where you can just plug in your um, items, put the supplier, you can put a rank against it and you can upload these. Okay, so you can, and you can modify these as well. So you can download existing items, you can create or update existing um, ASLs. So I can just put an update on this as the blanket. And I think these are all already, these items already have these supplies, some of these supplies assigned. So I can go in and make any changes. Okay, so I can just put a different supplier, change the ranking or make it a global to something else and then update these. So I'm not logged into this. So we are running up on the time. I also wanted to touch upon, um, before we go into the q and I just wanted to show the help again here because all of these are there detailed out in the user instructions. Also uh, linked in within here is the product support, which takes you directly to the community portal. All of our support we try to, we are now, the community portal was launched a few months ago, and this is the one-stop shop where you can get hold of anything you need related to more for apps. You can see all of your cases at one place. It gets a lot more organized to see at one glance what your cases are. And for that, you have to create, it's very easy to register. You can just log in with, once you have created your, um, your registration as a user, and you can have one super user manage it for, for all the cases if you have um, a power user or you can have all of your users going in and managing the cases. So that's one way to do it. And then other things available on the communities is the, is the discussions where you can go in and chime in on, on any questions, ask a question directly to the experts, they'll get to it and answer. And you can even go in and download any of the new versions. Pretty handy is looking at the release notes if you're out of date on let's say the pu receiving wizard if it looks very different from what you have you can go in and look up let's say here is the pu receiving this is the latest version and what has happened since the last time you upgraded you can look up the release notes this is also pretty handy for existing users to be able to look up what are we missing out is it a good idea to up upgrade at this stage or put it off for a little more you can decide based off of this all right, I think it's time to cast a glance at the questions. I see some buzz on the chat. Yeah, we have quite a few. So we will spend like the next 10, 15 minutes, whatever time allows us to go through this. If we run out of time, we'll obviously take them offline, but we can start cr cranking through these because we have quite a bit. Um, so the first one I have for you mm -hmm. is, okay, I'm interested to know if it is possible to do mass PO receipts adjustments mass close and withdraw POs using more for apps templates. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So you can do PO changes and you can do mass PO close and cancel if that's what withdraw meant. Um, so you can do all of that. There are modes dedicated to that. So when you are in the PO wizard, just go into the, uh, I hope you are able to see my screen. Yeah, it was blocking. The chat was blocking it. So if you can- Oh, you're all good. Okay, you can go into the cancel PO mode and you can create a new sheet or you can just say, okay, if you have an existing sheet, I'll create a new sheet on this one. Okay, and within here, you can download an existing PO and you can put cancel against the header level or the line level or even down to the schedule level if you want to do a specific shipment cancel. All right, and there are videos available. We can share those but here's the close and the cancel both, okay? So there's a cancel mode as well as a close mode. So let's say I want to just cancel some of the POs here. I would just go in 5128, download and put, this is how you put it. You can put a header cancel, yes, put the reason, and when you upload it, you cancel it. The same is available for close. Besides that, um, what was the other part of the question? Yeah, so that gives you the change. The PO change is through change API. That's the mode for changing, making mass changes to POs. There is no mass change available for PO receipts. 
you can create receipts. Yeah, there's not much on the receipt changes, but on the POs, you can go in and make changes to the need by date, price, quantity, at the shipment level, line level. So you have the change API mode for that. All right, let's go to the next question. I hope I answered that, gave some pointers. I didn't walk through the entire process, but I've just given some pointers here and we, we can reconnect and walk through it or share some videos related to that. Mm -hmm. Bumina, relay it to you or do you, do you see the chat too, Rajna? Yes, I have, yeah, yeah, I have it up here. Do you have anything for OM and pricing? Yes, we have sales order wizard and um, we have price list and pricing modifiers wizards. Those are the order management areas. That's to answer Shubha's question. We can connect. I think Shubha, we have worked together and I can share some resources around that, like videos and um, the actual download guides also. And then going on to Geeta's question, while creating new indirect POs, validating charge, charge account takes too long, taking five or 10, or five minutes for 10 lines. If I try to load more than 10 lines, it times out how to load hundreds of indirect POs. So I'm not sure if this is a wizard specific question. I, it looks like it's a wizard question and not just a generic Oracle question. So uh, yeah, so in terms of um, fine tuning your performance, a lot of things go into uh, the play, like your what are the columns you have, you could trim down and you can validate ahead. You can also allow the default values, uh, meaning that it derives the charge accounts if you have it all set up against the supplier that could leave it to Oracle to derive it. But we can take a look at if you have any specific um, wizard tuning issues, fine tuning the performance. We can have a separate session for that. So all you can do is, you know, you can just raise a support case and one of us will get back to you. We can have someone uh, reach out and work with you on a working session to fine tune. So go into product support and raise a case and you'll be able to do that. There's also an easy way if you want to share your files, you can send an email to support team at moreforapps.com that also creates a case automatically. But we always encourage you manage them in the community portal so that you're able to see them and see the interaction and the responses all at one place. All right, can you update, going on to Colleen's question also, uh, can you update a line type using this wizard? Um, I'm I believe it was the, the regular purchase order wizard when that was asked. Which is okay. yeah. Okay, so yeah, the line type is not editable, even on the Oracle form from what I remember. And anything that you cannot touch on the Oracle form is not, um, you know, not open for editing from the wizard as well. So I don't think the line time is line type is not available on the PO lines to be updated. Are there quotation wizards? So the PO line, I mean, the PO wizard has a mode for, again, I'll move this to the side. It has a mode for quotations. So you can go into this, create a new sheet, and it'll generate a sheet just for the quotations, your quotations. All right. And then it should have all of the columns that you would typically need for a quotation. It works exactly the same. It's an interface-based wizard. So you'll be able to see a pending status and then import it using the same standard PO import. Going on to the next question. Uh, so that was for, from Colleen for the quotation wizards. You can pop in follow-up questions if you have. Okay, going to next question. Can you use the templates manage templates feature to utilize org specific attributes if you have added custom attributes specific to your org that needs to be filled out? Uh, so org specific attributes for the I'm not sure if this is for the PO wizard. That sounds more like the items area. So I'm not sure. Uh, is there a follow-up? Yeah, POs and requisitions. Okay. Yeah, so if they are available on the sheet only, then you can add them. And then you can assign them to responsibilities. So if they are DFFs, you can, you can yes, you can filter them out. You can say a yes for certain responsibilities, create a template for um, certain sections of the uh, DFFs or attributes. 
and assign them only to one responsibility and keep the others slice other another slice out of the attributes and put them against a different responsibility. Uh, but if it is org specific, yeah, you would have to have responsibilities which are to you know specific to that org. Yeah, he said, for example, if you add a start date and end date to POs that are used when doing MPA POs, like an example. You can scroll down, it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom, okay. PO and requisitions, if you add a start date and end date to POs that are used when doing MPA, okay. Not sure what you mean by the MPA. If you can type that in, or we might have to. Yeah, Nikki, if you want to raise your hand, I can um, unmute you. Um, we can talk it out. Okay, cool. Give me one second, Rajna. I'll help you with that. Okay. Okay. Take it away, Nick. Hi. Sorry. It's actually Allison, not Nick. Allison. All I, right. I'm, I'm filling in for, for Nick. <laughs> We're right. on the same team. Um, so basically, I'm looking to find out if... Um, our organization had, has added certain attributes that are required for um, our forms to function around POs and requisitions. For example, if a notification needs to be sent to a particular 3PL warehouse, we have a flag that okay. you have to put in. It's specific to our organization. It's a custom attribute that we've added to the form. Or for example, when we do multi-period accounting POs where we need to amortize over three months to three years, we put put in the start date and end date. Um, okay. We use those in other aspects, but they wouldn't necessarily be required fields in that case, but they would right. be ones that would be optional fields. And I'm wondering if with your setup, when you download templates, will they have their attribute name or do we have to know like, this is line attribute number one, line attribute number two, because no, our users don't think of that. Right, right, totally understand. So you can control that. So what mm -hmm. you can do um, when I'm creating a new template, I can go into edit by sheet and I can say, yeah, it'll ask me to save the name the first time, but yeah, you can, this is just a quick process. You can review it again in the recording, but yeah, you will be able to say yes, no to that org specific template that you're doing. Let's go down quickly to the DFFs. These are the line attributes. So you can say yes or no, whichever you want. You can make them mandatory. And in addition, you can put a custom view label. So you can put a Great. name against it. And that stays, that becomes a column header when you generate. So users would see it on that just like they would on the PO yes. in that case. Awesome. So this I is actually the have the next series of like three or four questions. Like <laughs> if you want me to explain anything, I'm happy to. Yeah, do you want to check those out, Rajana? The GL yes. string one? Uh, I didn't see the question. Uh, what was the next question? Go so I'll, I'll just basically tell you. So for example, when we have requisitioners requisition, say for example, Amazon, we utilize the unspec code to identify the product category, assign that automatically and unspec category, or sorry, and product categories have default GLs assigned to them. Mm -hmm. And we don't want users changing these unless they provide a justification. So yes. when doing something like this, like the mass upload for requisitions that you demonstrated, number mm -hmm. one, how would users know what the default GL code is? Um, and if they don't have a way of knowing what the default is for that category, um, that product category, which they may or may not be able to put in when they fill it out, um, mm -hmm would they just overwrite or would they get some form of prompt letting them know that they're overwriting the default if it's going to be assigned automatically? Yes, you, you get a prompt when you're uploading. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, I had done that also. I'd left it blank and I can do that again. But you basically see a prompt when the processing window is going on. You can mm -hmm. see that um, it is being derived. Gotcha. And I do notice that you guys use a single GL field the way it would appear on the the PO as opposed to when you do the pop-up boxes on a on a PO or a requisition where you put in the pieces of the GL string as opposed to the full piece. Is, is there any way for our users to supply, for example, the, um, the cost center program code, um, any additional attributes, like we have an event code added in. Um, on the but, screen, on the same GL screen? 
on the on the GL string, but not supply the account code. Have that assigned automatically. Uh, so just a partial should be supplied and the other should be derived, you're saying? Correct. Few segments. Hmm. Yeah, you might have to pull up the form for that defaulting to take place. I think, uh, Stephanie, so that, that would be every requisition in our organization at this point. At this point, so that may or may not be helpful from a creation standpoint, but change might still work. Right, because yeah, you can't provide a partial because it'll get invalid. You know, whenever you upload, if you do a partial one, and if you are expecting the other segments to default, it's best to just pull it up on the form, and then you'll be able to see the defaulting for the others. So what what I'm understanding is on this charge account, you want to provide these two segments, let's say, and then the others you do not want to supply, but allow them to default. Is that right? Basically, ours are set up slightly differently from yours, but yes, that is the concept. Okay. okay. Yeah, in that case, yeah, you would have to look up combinations based on supplying the first two, and then, yes, then and, you can. Uh, and for us, it's actually combinations on the, the end, and the, the determined piece would not be based on the other elements there. It would be based on other fields elsewhere. Oh, For okay. example, product category determines the, oh, okay. Okay. the account, can, account code. Yeah, so you can use formulas here like VLOOKUPs and things which can derive from another column here. So that could be one way if you're able to. Gotcha. That, make, make no, that makes perfect sense. Lookups, so thank yeah. you. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, anything else, Alice? And then I've got the next two, I think. Um, so if you're using the order... Uh, order by feature when you were doing the piece where you're showing you could order your report in a specific format. Um, do you have the ability to do um, any sort of definition for the um, multi-select to determine what order it goes in? So like if you pick buyer and supplier uh, and something right. else, can you define what order you want those order buys to be in? Or is it just whatever order the system determines? Yeah, it is how it is on the form, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, so I think it goes sequentially. I can find out exactly it goes horizontally or sequentially. But yeah, the if you want rank one, rank two, you know, order by a column, this plus. That's ex yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. So like, for example, one reporting, I might want by buyer, by buyer and then by supplier. But the next thing, I may be more interested in the supplier and the order number and then the buyer right. or something like yeah, that. I think it just goes by the hierarchy, but I'll have to find out exactly okay. what it's done. But it must be by the hierarchy. So if it, it's by supplier and supplier site, then obviously it's going to do by supplier first and then supplier site. And then it yeah. might go to the buyer, but I'll have to find out what, what it does. Yeah. And then the, the last one I had in there was if you're combining requisitions that were previously across multiple POs, the mm -hmm. way that you were showing there, what what's happening to the previous POs and requisitions that were created that you're eliminating when you add the lines from one onto the no, other? No, this is for new creation, right? When you're doing the auto create, it's a brand new requisition uh, requisition to PO. So there's oh. no existing. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought because you had the requisition or you had the order numbers there or the requisition numbers there that it was it was updating an existing one to add those additional lines from the second one. Oh, no, this was creating from the requisition, just the requisition number is there, but the PO number is blank, if you notice. That's something we expect the system to give us back at the end. So it's creating a brand new. Um, brand new PO. Does that With the existing requisition numbers that have already created a PO? Which haven't created a PO yet, no. Okay. I misunderstood the demonstration then. It looked like you already had POs created from those requisition uh, numbers. Yeah, no, these are, I, I meant it this way, yeah, but if there is a scenario, we can look at that where you have to replace an existing PO with a new one. No, that's great. I was actually concerned about the the uh -huh. yeah possible <laughs> yeah, remnant pieces like how would you know to clean that up right yeah yeah i wouldn't think that that will be allowed by oracle either yeah okay you can oh. take me off mic that's everything
Okay, great. Thanks, Allison. Well, I think that is it then. Um, if you have any other questions, once again, feel free to just reach out after the fact. We are always here to, and happy to help. Um, before I pass it off to Steve and Ranjana to close it out, just a reminder that everyone will receive the recording and some example sheets from Ranjana uh, by the end of the week, by tomorrow. Just keep an eye out. But uh, Steve, do you have any, any words to add? I just want to thank everybody for attending. And Raj, I'm not sure how much of the community you were able to share um, with, with the group, but if there's anything you need to say or want to say about the community in closing, that'd be great. But thank you, everybody, for attending. And Raj, I'll let you close the session. Sure. Thank you, everyone. And a lot of familiar names. Good to connect with you all again here. And we uh, hope to have this as an ongoing series. I've done a couple in the past, and we want to keep this flowing. And yes, we want to see you all on the communities as well. Keep the buzz going, have discussions. We'll answer questions. We'll be on top of that. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.